Hello guys, this is Yash and uh, today we'll be talking about this n-gram language modeling. It's a very interesting topic and sort of in the direction of uh, AI and NLP, but it's not so advanced. The n-gram language models are, are not so advanced, but uh, it's a very simple way and still gives good results and output so let's uh, see and by the end of this uh, this video i'll uh, i mean you'll be able to build your own language model so that is very interesting okay so what exactly is language modeling now uh, it's just uh, trying to build a model which knows language that's the simplest way to put it okay so let's, let's say for example you are given this sentence and uh, this becomes your input this incomplete sentence becomes your input to the model and your model gives the output as this uh, this next word okay sort of like what it suggests basically so this is the intuition behind language modeling it knows the language and it uh, can sort of fill the missing piece after the sentence and it's not very random it knows like which word it can pick it may not be the most accurate word but uh, it uh, it will not be wrong is what i want to say it knows the structure of the language that is the essence of language modeling so similarly you can take this and uh, again give this input uh, by taking this uh, taking in this next prediction as well and again it keeps uh, producing these words so you can just go on and produce your own text, write your own books using this language modeling, maybe create a library and whatnot. <laughs> so the possibilities are endless with language modeling. It basically just knows what to print as the next word. That is, that is the main motive of language modeling. So one of the big use cases of language modeling that we see is in these mobile phone keyboards. When you start typing a message, these three suggestion words come up. So if you have ever wondered how these words come up, they, in, the, in the back end it's basically a language model that is running and it takes in this input and it sort of suggest you, suggests you the words that uh, you can uh, sort of fill in next. So there are many ways in which you can build this language model, but uh, we are going to talk about this n-gram language modeling and how it's done. It's based on it's based on probability theory, and uh, yeah, we'll, let's let's go on to some theory now. So what exactly is n-gram? N-gram is, is a sequence of n words. So n in n-gram stands for number of words. So for example, I am the king. This is like a, a normal sequence of words. Let's say. So one gram is like uh, you chunk single word from this so this i becomes a particular unigram am becomes a unigram the king like that so similarly for two grams you ha you chunk it in a way like this so considering this as a sentence you know you can get uh, bigrams as this is one of the bigrams i am and then am the becomes another bigram the king becomes another bigram this is this these are the three bigrams that we get, pick these bigrams are continuous similar to unigrams also it it needs to be continuous so am comes before i the comes before am that's that's the kind of knowledge we get from these kinds of n grams and similarly for trigrams we have i am the and uh, am the king so these are the three uh, sorry these are the two trigrams that we give that we get from this small sentence so these are all about n grams now uh, let's uh, actually uh, see the maths behind building a language model using these n grams well first uh, to calculate a unigram probability that is what is the probability of a word unigram is basically just a single word so what is the probability of a word coming from the entire corpus? So n represents number of words in your entire corpus and w can be any word. So what is the probability of that word coming? That is basically unigram. Now when we go higher bigrams and trigrams, you will need these this Bayes rule. I hope you remember the Bayes rule from the probability theory. So what Bayes rule states is uh, uh, you want to find the probability of this event A when b is already given or b has already happened and you want to predict uh, and you want to get the probability of a happening so this is how it, it's calculated so b has already occurred occurred so you will keep b in the denominator and uh, given that b has already occurred right so 
we need the probability of a and b happening together so this is what uh, comes in numerator so a and b happening together upon only the probability of b happening that's where you get this probability of a happening given that b has already ha happened uh, i'll show you how this is used to calculate uh, higher order n gram probabilities so to calculate bi gram probabilities what uh, the intuition is you want to calculate probability of a word given the last word so you want to calculate probability of ith word given that you know what is i minus one word so you know the previous word and you want to calculate the probability of next word so what you will do in that case is you get the count of these two words together but uh, your order also matters so i minus one should be last and then i so this is this is this comes in sequence divided by the uh, divided by the count of i minus one happening in the entire corpus so you see how many times this i minus one th word occurs in your corpus and uh, divided by the number of times these two words occur consecutively in your entire corpus and the sequence should be same it should not be wi and then wi minus one it should first be wi minus one then i and in the similar way you can calculate the probability of trigrams so here you want to calculate probability of this word given two words so i minus one and i minus two is given so you again you calculate for three uh, sequential words so this comes in sequence now minus two minus one and then zero so these three words and then two words are already given so these two words are already given so you calculate how many times these two words occur in your uh, in in sequence in your corpus and then divided by these three words occurring in sequence and that's how you get the probability of wi given previous two words so this is the all the math that is required for this is this is actually all the math required for building your language model that's it you don't need to know anything else so let's uh, actually go and take an example and illustrate how this is used to calculate probabilities and suggest words actually so let's say for example this is your corpus these four sentences it's a simple small corpus you can take you of course you will be taking a very large corpus in reality in practicality but just for the example sake let's uh, keep it short now we first derive the vocabulary from this corpus vocabulary is just unique words that are present in the corpus so uh, it's just that we'll be predicting the next word based uh, from from the set of vocabulary itself because the model doesn't know the entire uh, all the entire words it only knows it only can learn from the corpus so the model's vocabulary is only limited to the words that it that that are already present in the corpus so that's where this vocabulary is derived derived from <clears throat> so for example let's say you give an input as the girl a, a, to the to the model now what the model will do is it will run through each and every word in this vocabulary and it will try to find out which is the best fit word after the girl so for example let's say uh, we 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 want to calculate the probability of bot so we want to calculate the probability of bot given the girl the girl is the input so it's given so count of the girl comes in denominator that becomes our universe now from that universe how many times the girl bot appears so that is uh, so so if you if you so again we go back to our corpus now the girl bot this is the kind of the sequence that we are looking for and the girl for the denominator this is the bigram count and this is the trigram count so the girl bot appears two times and the girl appears three times so let's just quick check one two three the, the girl appears three times and uh, the girl bot and the girl bot these are the two times that it appears in sequence so around 67 percent of the time bot will be the next word if the girl is given that's what this means so similarly for another word let's say played oh i'm sorry so similarly for another word played the probability can be again calculated in the same way the girl played only appeared one time this is the one time that it appeared and the girl appeared again three times so 33 percent of the time played can come after the girl after the girl yeah so for the whole vocab you calculate the probability values 
so you see a lot of zeros are here because uh, for the it's zero because uh, let's go back so after the girl the word never appeared in the corpus so in numerator the count was always zero if if this is the the count will always be zero for this if it's not played the girl the never appeared in the corpus so this will become zero so probability will always be zero so that's what uh, these zeros are coming from and uh, we see only bot and played have some non zero values so bot has more more probability than played so we'll most probably just predict bot here and you can see it still works very nicely i mean bot is not a very wrong word to predict so we have actually tried uh, building a very nice model actually it, it works and it's not like and it's very simple to understand and to and to code as well we'll be looking at the code next so let's uh, jump on to the code now so yeah this is the code that i was talking about uh, so we are will be using the nltk library for this the nltk itself has the brown corpus in it now this is just a so we just load the corpus first and uh, just to show you how the corpus looks this is how the corpus looks so these are just a sequence of words it's like a, a large number of words i've just showed some 30 odd words from this corpus now and we have also built a vocab from this set so remember we have also done lowering on, on the words because you don't want capital t h e and uh, small t h e to be different your vocab will be the same uh, for small and uh, capital does okay so whatever capital words are there they just treat it as lower so you create a vocab out of this corpus now and this is the kind of the sample of vocab that you are looking so our corpus has uh, in total these many number of words that is very interesting and this is a large amount of words to actually learn a nice language model and the vocab of the corpus is this much so our our language model will know around 50000 odd words unique words so what we do is uh, with our corpus we ca uh, calculate all the bigram counts and trigram counts okay so we just loop through the whole corpus and uh, we calculate the two consecutive words and we save the count for those similarly three consecutive words and then save the count for those so for example now we can uh, now with these two data structures filled in bigram counts and trigram counts we can uh, ca we can just find out in for any bigram or trigram what is the count in the corpus so for example let's say for the bigram the king the king appeared 51 times in the co in the brown corpus that this is what this data structures can be used for so you can see this is also very simple it's just uh, counting how many times this bigram or trigram appeared in the corpus now next is i have written this function now this is where the heart of the algorithm is okay this is what uh, the main juice the main <laughs> flavor of, of the juice is okay so it just takes and takes in an input phrase and it takes in the two data structures that you created earlier and it takes in the vocabulary so so the main uh, this thing the main uh, part is you loop through the vocab and uh, you put in so this is a bigram language model so what do you do is uh, you take the two words that are already given to you as an input so in input will have two words it will check all for all the vocab words it will uh, create this tri trigram and it will create the and it will calculate the probability so all the test trigrams divided by the bigrams and the vocab probabilities will be saved so so for each word you will save the probability values now for each vocab word you will have this probability values and then you can just sort out these probability values and you can predict the topmost word uh, in the in the in the highest probability set so for example if you are given this sentence the i am the king and uh, you pass it on to our function above it will give you these sorted values so i am just uh, returning the top three values you can see here i'm just returning the top three words that are there in the prediction similar to the mobile phone keyboard example so this is the three these are the three words that our uh, model is suggesting after after this sentence so it will just take on these two words actually the king and uh, the king the and king and it will calculate what comes after it 
and then I, I mean you can see it still it's very good I mean I am the king <laughs> James maybe yeah or uh, the king of yeah that is also a good one so yeah and similarly you can just uh, now pick up one word and just send it and then you can do this forever okay so yeah that's it uh, I mean I hope you got to learn something this is what goes on in the this can what this can be what goes on in the phone keyboard but uh, there are more specific models and more sophisticated models today it's 2021 when I'm recording this video the first day of the new year and there are many models that have come out uh, sophisticated deep learning models and bird page models maybe in future there will be some very high <laughs> I mean no one will even look at these engrams model but it's very simple and still it's very understandable and you can build it very s soon okay so some of the future work in this uh, this project itself you can do is try adding more corpus try different models you can extend it to trigram models or even further four gram five gram models or even 20 gram models who knows and then there are some ways of uh, handling these zero counts okay so what i mean is uh, when dividing these test uh, tri trigram and bigram counts to calculate probabilities sometimes these bigrams will never appear in your corpus so divide by zero is not sp it's not possible so there are ways to handle those cases it's called smoothening techniques uh, we'll not uh, so it's called uh, smoothening techniques we will not be going in detail in this video but maybe in some future videos so yeah, that's all for this video. I hope you liked it and I hope you learned something out of it. Thank you.